Hello and welcome. In this video, we have uh, three calculator active questions, but for which the calculator will not be used for various reasons. For this one here, we are trying to find x in terms of p, so a calculator is not going to help us. For this question here, we're trying to solve an equation algebraically. So even though we have a calculator, calculator could help us check our solution. But when it tells us to solve algebraically, we're going to have to pretend we don't have a calculator. And here we have another one that tells us to solve exactly. And within the IB, if you're told to solve something exactly, pretend you don't have a calculator, but at least you can go back and check your solution. So without further ado, for this first question, if we're trying to solve this equation exactly, we can see that it seems to be a quadratic intersecting with a linear. So if we wanted to, we could have an idea as to what our quadratic might look like, as well as what our linear function might look like that might intersect, right? That we have a um, fairly steep slope right for the linear and we have a vertical stretch for the quadratic so one of the first things that we can do if we're going to solve exactly is to rewrite our equation set equal to zero so that we can use a zero product property and in this situation we can recognize that we do not have rational solutions because if I multiply 2 and 1, I get 2, and I do not have factors of 2 that sum to be 4. But we do have the quadratic formula that can help us uh, solve, right? So if with our quadratic formula, we can come in and solve with x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times 1 all over 2 times 2. All right, once again, where did uh, we get this from? Well, our quadratic formula, if we have this ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, then we know our solutions are of the form x is equal to opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And in this situation, we can identify the leading coefficient as 2. We can identify the linear coefficient as negative 4, and we can identify the constant as 1. So if we're looking to come through and solve this equation exactly, we can see computationally that this is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 8 all over 4, which would be 4 over 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 all over 4. And with this, if we simplify, we're going to have 1 plus or minus 2i over 4, which does simplify to be 1 plus or minus 1 half i. And so those are our two solutions, right? That the solutions that we have for x are both complex. So what does that mean for us? That means that the line and the parabola actually do not intersect. Okay. For the next question, we're asked to solve algebraically. And so if we're going to solve algebraically, we can multiply our uh, left side of the equation and right side of the equation by x minus 1. So that'll give us 3x minus 2 is equal to 3x minus 1 times x minus 1. Right? If we expand, we're going to have 3x minus 2 on the left side. 3x squared minus 3x minus x plus 1 on the right side. If I group my terms and move things to the right side of the equation, I'll have 3x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 1 plus 2, which will simplify to be 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 7x plus 3. 
And once again, if we look to this, we multiply 3 times 3, that gets us 9. We have a sum in front of our constant, so we would need two factors of 9 that sum to be negative 7, and we do not have. So once again, we'll need to use the quadratic formula to solve here. So if quadratic formula, x is equal to opposite negative 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. If I do this mathematically right quick, I have 7 plus or minus, let's see here, so that's going to be 7 over 6 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 24, so that's going to be some number all over 6, and so x is going to be equal to 7 over 6 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 49 minus 24 will give us 25, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so square root of 25 all over 6. Oh, well, that's nice for us. That gives us 7 plus or minus 5 all over 6. 7 plus 5 is 12. So that means that x is going to be equal to 12 over 6, or x will be equal to 2 over 6. Both of those answers simplify, so we will simplify 12 over 6 to be equal to 2, and we will simplify 2 over 6 to be equal to 1 third. If we wanted to check our answer, we could certainly come over here and check our answers and look at a calculator approach to check our response. And so let's set this up to full screen. We can see most of what we need. I will arrow over to my equations, add our equation. Let's see if we can recall 3x minus 2 over x minus 1. So we have a oops, division 3x minus 2 all over x minus 1 needing to equal 3x minus 1. That's the equation that we want to solve. And we're going to look in an interval from negative 10 to 10, right? So if we look in that interval to solve our equation, we have uh, x1 and x2, and it looks like we may not have the right solution. So did we possibly do something wrong? Was our equation entered incorrectly? We could double check if our equation was entered incorrectly. 3x minus 2, x minus 1. 3x minus 2, x minus 1 equals 3x minus 1. That seems to be correct. So we want to double check to see what happened here. All right. Sometimes mistakes happen, and that's all right. So we come over here and we say, okay, let's solve the equation. Right? Saying that we have this. If we don't trust that, that's okay. We can come over and look at graphing. And we can say, hey, I'm going to have right, f of x is equal to right, 3x minus 2 all over x minus 1. Right, and we can also look at the other function, which was 3x minus 1. Right, we can plot our graphs, and we want to find out where the coordinates of the points of intersection are, and it looks to be at negative uh, 1.76 indeed, and the other intersection point does look to be at 0 0.56. So we look to have the same solutions and so we want to come in and just double check do we have everything set up correctly for what i have so we have 3x minus 2 right being equal to 3x minus 1 times x minus 1 3x times x is x squared 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x negative 1 times x is negative x and we have Let's see here, if we look at this, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we would have on the right-hand side, if we did an intermediate calculation, 3x minus 2 is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Okay, so we can come back and double check our computations with what we have, right? And say, hey, I want to check to see if 3x minus 2 equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 
has the same solutions as what we did previously. And we can see that, yes, we have the same solutions. And we kind of see that 7, 6. We even see that our discriminant is 13. So that tells us that in our work, which can happen, we may have had an algebraic mistake. That's what's nice about these. So if we solve something algebraically and we have a calculator, if we have time, we can go back and check our work. So our discriminant should be 13. Oh, well, look, here's our mistake that we had 4 times 3, which is 12, times 3 is not 24. So our mistake was over here on this 24. That should not have been 24. That should have been 36. That means that we have the square root of 13, and that means that these values were not correct. And instead, right, the values that we should have had is x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 6. And we notice that for our calculator, using our NumWorks calculator, we get those solutions. And what's nice is when we set it in this form, we get those solutions exactly and the approximate answer. So a nice thing that you can get help with your algebra if you have a calculator and you're asked to solve algebraically but realize that it might take time and so you might have to say, hey, let me come back to do it. So mistakes can happen. What do you do when they happen? Can you recognize them? All right. Apologies for those that caught the mistake early on. We're like, but, 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 but. Well, this video is meant to help those students that may not recognize that immediately. Okay, so our last question that's calculator active that we'll do in this video. So we have P is an element of the real numbers, but not zero, right? So this over here is telling us that P can be any real number, right? That P can be any real number, but P is not zero, okay? So we want to solve this equation for X in terms of P. Okay, so if I recognize this, I have a quadratic in X, so that's going to give me P minus 1 times X squared, right, plus P minus 2PX minus 2X being equal to 0. Let me rearrange this in X, and I've got P minus 1 times X squared, right, and then it looks to be that I've got a minus X times 2p plus 2. So really, I could have factored out a minus 2x and just said p plus 1. All right. So I've got p minus 1 times x squared minus 2x times p plus 1 and then plus p. So I have this quadratic in x. Now, for this quadratic, if we're thinking this about ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, in this case, a would be p minus 1, b would be negative 2 times p plus 1, and c would be equal to p. So if I'm going to solve this in x, in terms of p, then x is going to be equal to right, opposite b, so that's 2 times p plus 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be 4 times p plus 1 quantity squared, minus 4 times p minus 1 times p, all over 2 times p minus 1. Okay, this doesn't ask us to give a simplified form, so it's quite possible that this form would be satisfactory. We have a solution for x in terms of p. If I was asked to express it in a simplified form. Well, this can simplify, right, to p plus 1 all over p minus 1, right, plus or minus, and underneath the square root, our discriminant is going to be 4 times p squared plus 2p plus 1 minus 4 times p squared minus p. And this is all over 2 times p minus 1. 
So that gives us this p plus 1 over p minus 1 plus or minus our square root. Well, what are we going to have underneath our square root? What's going to be our discriminant? We'll have a 4 times a p squared minus 4 times a p squared. We have a 4 times a 2p minus a 4 times a negative p. So that's really 8p plus 4p, which would be 12p. And then we have a 4 times 1. And so we have a 12p plus 4 all over 2 times p minus 1. And of course, that would simplify further, and we would be able to say that x is equal to p plus 1 over p minus 1. All right, plus or minus, I could factor out a 4, and that would give me a 2. So that's going to give me then all over the square root of 3p plus 1 all over p minus 1. So not the type of solution you're probably used to seeing, but unless if they don't tell you to simplify the answer, this answer would be valid. If they do ask you to simplify the answer, then we would be looking at the simplified form. So, once again, right, solving quadratics seems easy, but we have to understand it at this higher level expected from our Ivy Maths course. Thank you for your time.